I am so excited that it's nearly autumn. Oh, that was hot. Hello everybody, it's wonderful to see you again, or welcome if you're new. My name is Becca and I release new videos every Sunday. They're usually a little bit random. Um, if somebody could give me a genre, that would be great. I like to see how I can improve the world just a little bit and how I can improve my little brain and hopefully sharing some stories about my life and my experiences will help you too. So if you do want to come along for this confusing journey, please do like, subscribe, comment. We have such a lovely community down there. If the comments are still there, I guess they are. Or they're there, maybe they're there. And everybody is so welcoming, so please do share your stories and send some encouragement to somebody who might be needing it. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. I am a very sentimental person. And for a while I formed an inability to part with objects of any sort of sentiment. The thing is, as people, once we are given something or once we buy something, we feel an attachment to it and we feel as though we can't get rid of it. There is sentiment within this inanimate object that we feel a duty to, or we feel as though we need to have in our lives. I had a lot of stuff. <laughs> like, I am embarrassed to admit how much stuff I had. Um, it was, a lot. And um, recently I moved out of a three bedroom house I had in the gorgeous Herefordshire countryside. I was living there on my own and having a three bedroom house was amazing. It had little personal touches to me. Um, it was gorgeous. I had a garden. Then the cost of living crisis happened and I had to move back in with my parents. My room at my parents is tiny. It is probably the size of a pool table and it was my childhood bedroom that I hadn't properly lived in for quite some time. Uh, you know, it had books all on the wall, books that I hadn't read for <laughs> 10 years. It was, it was a bright blue kind of colour. Um, yeah, it just, it, was, it wasn't very me. <laughs> so what happened was I had to condense my three bedroom house into this tiny bedroom. And don't get me wrong, I am so, so grateful for my parents because some people aren't as fortunate as I am. I am so lucky to have them and I'm able to go back somewhere safe and warm and friendly and be surrounded by my little family again because some people don't have that option. I really hope you know that I'm aware of my privilege. I am not trying to complain. I am very, very lucky. I'm just using this example to show how I've gone from a three bedroom house into a tiny one bedroom, but I do feel incredibly lucky. I've gone off on a tangent, get used to that. Going from a three bedroom house where I obviously had my own kitchen, the living room, I had an office, my own bathroom, back to just my childhood bedroom, uh, it did mean I had to evaluate the possessions I had. I had accumulated quite a bit of stuff, uh, as you do, uh, we all do it. Uh, we Quite often we don't even think about it. And I was going through my things and I realised there was a lot of unnecessary clutter I really didn't need anymore. The same thing happened when I got to my parents' house and I found boxes of things sort of shoved under my bed and in my parents' room of things that I didn't need. I had kept hold of letters from ex-boyfriends. I'd kept hold of so many books. I can't even, uh, I couldn't even count how many books I had. I kept receipts, I kept plane tickets, I kept everything, everything and I was stood in my little room, ready to unpack, looking at it, thinking, what? How am I ever going to get all of my contents into this little room? So I decluttered. The first thing I decluttered was photographs. Photographs hold a lot of sentimental value for people, especially when the people that are in them aren't here anymore, or when you want to hold on to memories that you're worried you'll forget. I am very attached to photographs. I take photographs all of the time, all of the time. It annoys people. I worry that one day I won't remember something or I won't 
recall a moment that felt special. But as I was going through my thousands of photographs, and I mean thousands, I had a stack of, you can't even see, I had a stack of photo albums, it must have been about 30 photo albums, all full and loads of individual photos. I had thousands and I was looking through them and it was fun to look through, but I was looking at myself in the photos and I was looking at other people in the photos, some of whom I couldn't even name. I wasn't proud of some of the photos, I looked unlike myself. I didn't really want a memory of myself being like that and I also had pictures of people I no longer have in my life. So I had a massive cull of photos. Some advice, quickly. Photographs aren't recyclable. And this pains me, pains me. If you know me, I'm really into sustainability and I'm really into doing the best I can for the environment because we're on this planet, we need to cherish it. And I really believe that. So when I started the journey of decluttering, I was just making sure to give things away or recycle them. And when it came to my photos, I just assumed you could recycle them, they're paper, obviously, but no, you can't. I've learned a valuable lesson and I now no longer print photographs unless they're for a purpose. If I'm putting them in a photo frame or have an album that I specifically want to keep special, I will print them, but I no longer print bulk photos because you cannot recycle them. Little tip there, we'll get back to what I was saying now. <laughs> so I must have got rid of thousands of photographs and some of them I was a little bit sad to part with, but when I actually looked at them, I thought, why do I sit and look at them? Usually I sit and look at them when I'm sad and when I want to almost relive the past. And actually that's not very good for you. I think photographs especially are part of emotional baggage that we need to address and getting rid of them helps a lot. Now I have a curated box of photos that I absolutely adore. And when I look through them, I feel happier. It's a sort of self-soothing method now where I can open the box and feel loved and feel happy to have the friends and family that I do have instead of looking through them and looking and feeling longing or regret or upset that I no longer talk to the people in the photographs. Things like photos do definitely lead to emotional baggage and we are all guilty of having too many photographs. And sometimes they're just a photo of a pheasant you saw crossing the road in 1999 and you just wanna keep it because it was a pheasant that was really cool and you don't even remember that pheasant crossing the road. That was definitely a personal reminder for me to not take random pictures of pheasants. What I realized when I started getting rid of about 90% of the things I own is we cling on to the past way too much, or at least I do. And what I learn is the past doesn't actually exist. It does insofar as we keep it alive through stories and photographs, but it doesn't exist. Even now doesn't really exist. And when I think about that for too long, my mind turns to jelly a little bit. We keep the past alive. In doing so, we keep the good and the bad. So I think it's really important that our possessions reflect who we are now and who we want to be and become. If keeping the past alive in ornaments and possessions fills you with sadness and stress, then maybe it is time to declutter a little bit. Again, by getting rid of almost everything I owned, I was able to start anew a little bit. I was able to forgive myself for past mistakes and allow myself to move forward into a life that I wanted to be living. As we grow up, as we get older, we change and we evolve and our tastes change. We cannot be expected to keep everything. We should own possessions possessions shouldn't own us. And I'd definitely got to the point where that was happening. I was very much in the position where everywhere I looked was an element of my past, be that good or bad. And it was really refreshing to sit back and get rid of it all. Now I have a gorgeous room that I feel is my safe haven and I feel happy and calm there. Yes, it's small. Yes, I'm struggling a little bit to share a kitchen, with two other adults, my parents, whom I love very much, 
but it's just an adjustment and a change. Again, I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to have my parents around to look after me and to care for me. And change is difficult, but with this change came a change in myself and a change at how I look at the past and a change in what possessions I kept and what possessions no longer served me. By reducing clutter, you can reduce emotional clutter too. And this is probably my favorite bit of advice to give. When your head feels foggy and when your brain doesn't quite work how you want it to, when you're procrastinating, when you're feeling a little bit like the world is against you, decluttering is really helpful. I'm not telling you to get rid of everything you own or get rid of all your photographs or all of your special possessions. That's ridiculous. But maybe evaluate what you do have and see which things bring you happiness and see which things soothe you and which things make you think of a time you don't want to remember. When it comes to my self-soothing or my self-calming journey that I'm on, decluttering has been the best one so far. I could probably talk about it for hours and I will definitely make other videos on it and I would like to talk a bit about moving from a three bedroom house to my childhood home again. But I wanted to get this video out there in case somebody needed it and somebody was in a change. We are in a cost of living crisis here in the UK and all over the world there are people struggling and people that need that bit of support. I'm from an incredibly privileged position, although some might not think so. Although I am not wealthy, I come from a working class family, I have always been loved and I've always been happy in my family. And for that, I am very, very grateful. We might not have everything that other people could have. And perhaps maybe my ability to get rid of possessions is down to an upbringing where we didn't have particularly much. But growing up, you do collect things. And I really feel that decluttering also helps you to declutter what's going on up here, what's going on in here, and what's going on all around you. I really hope this video could help somewhat. This video is part of my Finding Calm series and I really hope it helps. I really do believe that our possessions can lead to carrying around emotional baggage and in getting rid of things, we can lose that just a tiny smidge. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and comment down below. Let me know how you feel about decluttering. Does it fill you with terror or do you absolutely love it? Thank you so much for always supporting me and always being generally lovely human beings. You are wonderful and you are what make this community extremely special. Have a good one and I will see you in the next one. Let's have the obligatory sip my tea at the end of the video. <sighs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Cheers, have a good one everybody. Bye. I love that I was on a spinny chair that whole time. I feel like I didn't make the most of it. Oh, my bad. <laughs>